So next we will look at um, how to create a list uh, in a repeatable stage. So before doing that, what I can uh, show you is like, let's try to see how a repeatable event looks like in our capture application. So let me duplicate this tab. I go to tracker capture. And uh, let me select the org unit. CHW Mahasot, and let's take an example from the case based surveillance. Mm, what we will do is to sort the people here by surname, and we will open this record, Angela Kemp. Right? So I click and open this record. And uh, to be more clear, let me hide the timeline data entry widget and enable tabular data. Right. Okay, so what we can do is, let's see what we, uh, let's focus on this uh, second stage, the lab request. So here we are seeing now for this patient, now, uh, this Angela Campbell has only one clinical examination and diagnosis uh, stage or the event because it's not a repeatable stage. So because of that, we have uh, only one record. But when it comes to stage two, the lab request, we are seeing more than one events for this stage. So here we are seeing one event for the uh, nasopharyngeal swab and another one for bronchoalveolar lavage, right? So this is kind of a situation we are trying to demonstrate like uh, for this kind of situation and we want to pull that information out from the DHIS2, like how it is going to be visualized, right? This is the situation that we try to address in our next example. So what we will try to do now is to go back to event reports and let's open a favorite and the favorite will be COVID uh, case-based surveillance lab request summary event, this one, okay? I click and open, and then you will see this table. What do we have in this table? In this table, we have, in fact, the same data from the person I showed you before, Angela Campbell, and you will see here the, the information related to the two events that I showed you in the tracker capture. So you are seeing Angela Campbell, uh, with the, the, the date of lab request, registration date, the org unit, and the same local case ID, uh, having uh, different reasons, like um, first one as a contact of a case, and second one uh, is uh, seeking healthcare due to suspicious of uh, COVID-19, right? And then uh, the two specimens, even though for the PCR, coming from uh, different uh, locations. So that's the situation that, have, I mean, like this is what happens when we have the same person undergoing multiple events. It is uh, again related to the question that was asked before the break. So if you have the same person, I think this is exactly the situation you were uh, asking. Um, who, like, the question came from John, yeah, exactly. So this is what can happen. So let's see, like uh, if we want to get, a, I mean, get this kind of a visualization, like uh, get all the events from a repeatable program stage, what we are going to do. So what we have to do again is uh, I click on this new, right? So I refresh uh, the entire table and I will select from the table style as line list. And the output type still remains same as events. And for the data, the data dimension, I will select the program as COVID-19 case-based surveillance and the stage as lab requests, right? And we again have uh, data elements and attributes. So let me select the data elements. So one thing is, um, sorry, no, let me select the attributes. First name, then we have surname. Then let's take some data elements. 
Oh, and also we need uh, something else, which is the local case ID. Is it there? Local case ID, right? And we have the data elements where we will be selecting the test reason and type of test and the type of specimen. So from here, to get the same output, uh, what we can try to do is the local case ID, we can uh, like, uh, so the, the situation is like now, for example, if we like, let's try to design the table like with this configuration and see the output that we get. And let's see like how we can limit it. Okay. So these are the configurations and uh, let me select uh, the period as uh, last year. Then the org unit as Tau PDR. Let's uh, take for the entire country. So, yeah. And then I click on update and let's see what happens. So I get a total of uh, 1,507 cases for the entire country uh, for this information, right? But for us to get that uh, particular, uh, the similar output, like, like uh, what I showed you before. What we have to do is we have to type, like it could be contains or it could be is exact, right? So let me type ID of that person, which was ID 5353942, right? Then let's try to click on update. You see like uh, we get the information filtered based on the local case ID. Right, which was uh, again that person's ID. Right? Okay. So things to note here: the same pers person can have multiple events in a in a repeatable event, and you will uh, and that person person will be counted twice. But that is of course logical because we are only counting the events and not the persons because. Right, uh, let's try to sort it by surname. Then we will be able to see like, uh, um, I had some issue with my network. Uh, I hope I'm, I'm, I'm audible now. Yeah, all good. Okay. okay, right, sorry. Uh, I was explaining like, because we filtered everything by the uh, local case ID. We only had two rows in the previous output, but when we remove that uh, filter, the local case ID, it will be listing out. It's uh, undergoed um, multiple tests, just like uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the previous example I showed you, right? So here, uh, what we have to realize is this number of cases here, request that we have received. And so that's what we have to note in a repeatable stage. All right, uh, are there any questions? If not, uh, let's try to see how this works when we select the enrollment type output. Some issues, let me. Clear this first okay, and then try to open. Okay. COVID case based surveillance, lab, uh, lab request summary enrollment. Okay. Right. So, what's the difference in the output that we get here? So, here you can see this is a table which is based on output type enrollment. 
So you have more, more or less the same. Sorry, is there any questions? Fine. So in this table, uh, we have the same columns, right? We had the case ID, surname, first name, and the reason, and type of test, and the type of specimen. It's just that in this table, we are only counting one person on demands, right? So that's why we are seeing much less number of uh, cases. So let's let's see how we can design a table like this. So to do this, let me click on new. What you are going to do is the table style as line list and the output type, we will select enrollment. The program is case-based surveillance and the stage again is, uh, we will only take one stage for this, which is um, lab request. We will select the attributes, the local case ID and First name, surname. That's it from the attributes and from the data elements, we will select lab test reason, type of test, and the type of specimen. And I will select the period as this year, and then organization unit as CSW Mahasat. Yeah, so this is the one. And I click on update. And it's the exact output that we get, right? We have 18 cases and you can see here, the case IDs are unique and uh, you don't have the same person uh, repeated twice, right? Now, like you can't actually judge by the names, first names, surnames, you can have my uh, same first name, comb uh, surname combination for multiple people, but Ideally, this is just, uh, the enrollment is unique. So one person or one enrollment should only appear once, right? So this is like, what, what it actually does is, it's ignoring um, the other events the person has gone through. So you have to look at it like this, like what we really want to display in this table. So basically, if you are interested to uh, obtain a list of, Lab, lab specimen or lab request, it makes sense to go with events because like there, the, our focus is to know uh, like how many tests were done. More information about the persons who have undergone lab, uh, lab tests, then this kind of uh, uh, output makes more sense because like here, the enrollment means like uh, you are actually getting more information about the attributes, right? So what I actually feel is like, if you really like, you can do something like this. Like if you want to know, like if you have a uh, 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 program stage, which uh, collect different types of tests, like you, you take PCR, full blood count, uh, uh, x-rays, I mean, multiple tests. And if your uh, focus is to know information about people who but you have to decide which type of uh, I'm sorry, I, I had some network issues. Uh, am I audible now?
Yeah, all right, okay. Sorry, I, I, will, I will try to repeat uh, the last uh, two minutes what I mentioned. So basically what I, what I, what I was trying to say is like, uh, even though there are limitations to these two types of uh, outputs, events or enrollments, both of these have uh, different use cases. So for example, what you want to highlight is about uh, the, 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 the different uh, laboratory samples that were done in a particular area or in the, in the country, then it makes sense to use events because that will be more descriptive about different types of samples, the tests and the, uh, 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 the sample sites, so on and so forth. But say for example, what you actually want to know is about the people who have uh, undergone some tests Right. Say, for example, like you have so many tests that are done under this stage, like you will be doing full blood counts, UFRs, PCRs, and so many. But we just want to know, like, uh, what were the social demographic factors about the people who have undergone PCR tests? So, if that's the case, then enrollment count, enrollment type of output uh, make make more sense. Right. So, this is what you have to understand. Like, so uh, uh, both these. Uh, use cases like uh, using output type events and enrollments have their own uses. Right, so are there any questions related to this? Uh, about uh, the events and enrollments for repeatable stages? I'll be talking about multiple stages separately next, but uh, any questions related to repeatable stages? If there are no questions, uh, let's do the exercise two in the learner's right. Uh, so I don't think it'll take too long. So probably um, we can, uh, yeah, we can start again in like eight minutes. Shall we do that?